Hi everyone, welcome back. We are in chapter two of Rod's Wrath, the Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore, titled Anxiety, which your girl's got a lot of A. <laughs> Alright, uh, enough of that. Let's get into it. The next day, Rod and I head out to the forest. Just as I anticipated, the trees are more vibrant today. The branches weigh down by shining red apples. It's beautiful. I reach out to touch one of the apples. Do you think we should pick some for Emmeline? I'm sure she'd love that. A gentle breeze rustles the leaves of the trees as we walk, taking our surroundings. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm still a little sick, so I apologize. <laughs> the sounds of birds chirping punctuates the gentle silence. Being here with Rod makes me feel at peace. For the moment, neither of us had to worry about being seen in each other's company. We can relax. This place is full of nostalgia. I look forward to our secret meetings here. Funny that we're still meeting here like this, even after so much has changed. We stand there for a few moments, savoring the peace and quiet. And then, Rod slowly steps away from me and holds out his hand. May I have the stand? Of course. The two of us have never needed music to dance. I close my eyes and lean my head against his chest, relishing the feeling of his closeness. It's been a long time since we danced like this, but I had the movements memorized. It's easy to slide back into routine. Later, when the sun sinks below the horizon, Rod turns to me. As much as I have enjoyed this, I think we should head back. He smiles. Your dance lessons are about to start, and we unfortunately need a bigger space for them. I take his arm when he offers it. So, apple picking, and then we return to the palace? Rod nods. Rod? Thank you for suggesting this break. Anything for you, Lisa. The next day, Father officially introduces Rod as our dance instructor. The announcement causes quite a stir, and soon all the servants are talking about it. It's not long before the gospel spreads through NGL. Most of what people are saying is positive. It seems Rod does have quite the reputation. It's amazing that Rod has made a name for himself in such a short time. I hope he overhears the conversations and is proud of himself. I certainly am. I'm on the way back to the third room when I hear one such conversation between two maids. So, what do you think of the new dance instructor? He looks to have a stern demeanor, but I'm sure maybe he's a secret charmer. Big giggle. I'm impressed someone so young has learned so much prestige in Vagantia. I can only imagine how talented he must be. And he's handsome to boot. I wonder what he looks like when he smiles. He always such, has such a scowl on his face. Strange, isn't it? Sir Rod has visited the palace many times before. I wonder why. Oh. Oh? Do you suppose he's courting Princess Emily? They seem very close. Oh, maybe you're right. I nearly choked my own breath and had to put a hand in my mouth to keep from laughing. You know what's strange, though? The fact that they look so similar. That is rather odd. Do you think he could be courting Princess Lucette? You think? From what I hear, Princess Lucette has never expressed interest in any of her suitors. Well, I guess I'm grateful no one has caught on to that tad bit of gossip, at least. I shake my head and make my way through the snow room. Rod and Emily look up in unison when I step inside. Emily immediately shows her hands behind her back and smiles at me. It's a strange, strange smile. Hi, Lucette. Are you okay? Of course. Why wouldn't I be? Her voice actually squeaks, and I'm unsure whether to be confused or concerned. I raise an eyebrow. Um, Rod gives Emily a gentle nudge. Aren't you going to be late for your piano lessons, Em? Oh, yeah, you're right. I'll see you both later. Emily makes a beeline for the door, and only slows as she gets closer to me. She turns and obviously hiding something behind her back, continues to side step the door. You're acting strange. It's just your imagination. The last thing to leave her mouth before she exits is an excruciatingly awkward laugh. Rob looks like he's trying not to cringe. <laughs> Mood. Emily is a terrible liar. A terrible, terrible. I turn to Rod expectantly. They're obviously keeping some secret from me, but I'm more amused than irritated. I cannot help the smile on my face. What is it? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Rod smiles, if not at all, really 
before turning to the nearby table to look at his music sheets. The table is new. Father had a place here for our lessons. So, have you heard the latest gossip? Rod groans. Please tell me you're not actually interested in that. I assure you, this gossip is a little more entertaining. How so? I heard a rumor you're recording him late today. <laughs> Rod stares at me in horror. I laugh at his reaction. You're just messing with me. No, it's the truth. Who started this rumor? Do they not realize how ridiculous it is? Rod pinches the bridge of his nose. Oh, why did it have to be M? There's nothing about you. I suppose we have no chemistry. That just means our acting is impeccable. How much longer are we going to pretend, Rod? It's been two years. You made the switch so we don't have to hide, so why are we still doing this? Rod looks away at I assistant. Are you still afraid people will think you're unworthy because you're a commoner? Rod flinches. I saw what Mother went through after marrying the king. I know it must have been a difficult transition, but Ophelia has well left. I look at him perplexed. Are you scared you have to go through the same thing as Ophelia? I don't care what people say about me. I'm concerned about what they'll say about you. Rod, you already know I do not care about what others say about me. I'm no stranger to shutting people out. I lived most of my life being hated by this kingdom. Rod, I think I can handle myself just fine. You're right. Maybe it is me after all. Rod. Rod abruptly shrugs as if shirking the worry from his shoulders. Let's not talk about this right now. I just remembered something I wanted to discuss with you. Oh? I was thinking last night of how you never responded to my last letter. Time. You arrived three days later. Emma intercepted the messenger that day to make sure no letters were being sent to me. She didn't see anything from you. I was going to write, but I was upset that day and wanted to put it off until I was calmer. If this is because of my wish, then maybe I should have never told you about it. I stared him baffled. Rod, can you imagine how terrible I would have felt if you hadn't told me? Leaving me in the dark would have been the greatest insult to me. Jake said. Sorry, that was a stupid thing to say. I, I know. I know it's a bit late, and I know I'd already made up my mind, but you needed to know. And I always figured that if you truly despised the idea, I would stop. But you were hopeful, weren't you? Even if you were a bit reluctant. Maybe I was hopeful. I did not get angry at him as I should have, but did it really seem that way to him? Except, I know you're unsatisfied right now, but trust me, I've learned from my mistakes. From here on out, we face our problems together. I would like that, Rod, only it's too difficult to do things together when you live so far away. I know, but I promised you I had a plan, right? I will make things work. I look at him with scrutiny, but Rod does not wait for this time. He regards me confidently, and after a few moments, I cave. I will trust you then. Rod sighs. I wanted this to set, not just for you, but for myself too. Being a prince was a constant reminder of how much I lied to the world about who I was. With this wish, I start living a life created, crafted by my own hands. But before I can say anything else, Rod has closed the distance between us and pressed his lips to mine, effectively cutting off my words. Afterwards, he pulls back and looks right into my eyes, his face flushed. It strikes me that this has happened more than a few times. <laughs> You always do that so suddenly. That was weird. That was a weird. Right, anyway, Rod grapples and shrugs. It's always the easiest way to get you to stop talking. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it is, Rod. Oh my god, look at her boy. He's so blushed. He's got a bad farmer stand on his face. <laughs> I love you, Lisa, and I would do anything for you. No matter what happens in the future, I know I will never regret this wish. Rod sets a hand on my shoulders and squeezes. Stop worrying about all this, okay? I promise it'll work out. I cannot promise. I can. I, oh, oh. I cannot promise, but I will certainly try. That's good enough for me. Now, he reaches for my hand and plants a kiss on the back of it. Shall we continue where we left off yesterday? I smile as I place my other hand on his shoulder. We shall. Oh, they look so cute. 
past few days, Radis would teach me one of the gratitude gifts he learned. This dance in particular is full of energy and involves a lot of twirling and sidesteps. Rad leads me spin after spin. We become comfortable enough dancing with each other that we do not need to focus on our steps when we move. I'm glad because it allows me to focus on a serene expression. Is there something on my face? I shake my head. Nothing but your wonderful smile. I was just thinking about how much I miss dancing with you. Same here, but now we can do it every day. Yes, only how much longer will every day last? By the time the song has stopped, I'm almost out of breath. A job will done the set. You still need to practice your footwork, but you're learning quickly. Red leads me to a chair and hands me a glass of water. Thank you. I gulp down at least half the glass before raising a rod. <sighs> that dance is exhausting. How are you not out of breath? I've had a lot of practice. Once you use the steps, they become cathartic. You just need to build stamina. It's a dance that suits for God kids, though. They're very lively. I look at Rod, curious. Can you tell me more about your life in Brigantia? Rod seems to ponder quietly for a few moments, and then, after some consideration, he pulls a chair and sits beside me. He begins by telling me how difficult life was for him at the beginning, especially given that he never left the kingdom before. He was constantly homesick, but Claude and his family were able to lighten that burden by being overwhelmingly, overly accommodating. At first, it was overwhelming. Eventually, however, Rod became accustomed to the royal family's enthusiasm. He tells me very briefly about them. When he brings up Lance, Claude's brother, I cannot help but wonder. I've spoken to Lance a few times. He seems more cordial than Claude, but I do not know him well. I wonder what he's like. Rod crosses his arms. Being a student was easier than being a teacher. Back when I lived here, all I needed to do was study. I might not have been good at most of my classroom, but at least it was straightforward work. Really? Emily told me you were, that you were a fast learner. She said you knew how to sing, dance, cook. Rod flushes. Aww, oh, he's back to blushing little baby. I excel in those things because I enjoy them, not because I was a good student. I look at him curious. I've never heard you sing or watch you cook. Rod shrugs. Dancing was the easiest way for me to express myself when I lost my voice. Now it feels like the most natural thing to focus on. But traditional classroom has never convinced to me. I thought you were only mad at expressing your feelings. Rod cheeks turn an endearing shade of pink as he scowls at me. You're the worst. He sighs as he glances out the window at some distant light sight. So, what are you bad at then? Why would you ask me that? Because I'm curious. You have to promise not to laugh. I won't. Rod stares down at his hands and sighs. History, politics, fencing, remembering dates, names, and combat. My swordmanship is atrocious. There's a clear distress in Rod's eyes when he confesses this to me. His usual stoic facade is broken. The Rod I see before me looks vulnerable and anxious. I cannot help but smile. Why are you smiling? I'm always happy when you open up to me. It makes me feel like I'm part of your life. Then, from now on, I will make sure to tell you I would love that. Once my dance lessons are over, I head back to her to practice creating simple potions. It's a solitary task, and what I normally practice in my free time. However, probably because I'm always so bored during experiments, I sit up gargling, realizing blatantly that I've long sleep at my desk, with various potion ingredients scattered on the surface. I stare at the clock. It's already the next day. How in the world did I sleep through last night's dinner? A knock sounds on the door. Your Highness, His Majesty requires your presence in the throne room. Understood. I wonder what he wants to be so early in the morning. Father seated on the throne when I enter. Rod stands before him. Good morning, Lisette. Good morning, Father. I approach warily. I called you for an important announcement. Rod, would you like to do the honors? I'm surprised by the glowing smile on Rod's face. I've officially asked his permission from his majesty to court you this <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Things are heating up. I really hope. So my hope for this playthrough is that we end with a proposal. Because all the other ones could have ended in a way. 
So, I want to roll. That's what I want. What do you guys want? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Tell me what you want. What you really, really want. Right here. He's like, shut up. Anyway. I say bring the two of them with wide eyes. When did this happen? Last night. You were already asleep, so I thought it was best to wait until the morning to tell you. I took my baffled gaze to rock and still smiling. I thought about what you said. I agree, it's time we stop hiding. There's no reason for it anymore. I move before I can think. In a heartbeat, I have my arms wrapped around Rod's waist and my head on his shoulder. I feel this is a momentous way to suddenly lift up my shoulders. There will be no more hiding. Which means I no longer have to hide my affection for him. News of our courtship spreads like wildfire. I'm accustomed to the gossip and I'm phased by the attention, but I can tell Rod is unnerved by the sudden spotlight. Still, we both do our best to continue our daily routines. I do notice, however, that Rod has become busy in recent days. He tells me he is meeting with Father about important matters. I figure it's also about the upcoming ball. I just finished my dance lesson for the day, though Rod is still in bed. The Rod is meeting my father in the throne room. I have no such obligations and decide to return to my room to meet about potion making. I pass by the dining hall when I pause hearing voices inside. And because there's some bears, he ended up running away. I hear laughter. That definitely sounds like Rod. Those voices? I push the door open to the hall. Shut the door to the hall. Ophelia and Ophelia. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, y'all. I'm losing my mind. Ophelia and Emily look up when I enter. I'm shocked to see Sebby there too, sitting on Emily's shoulder. Before Rod and Sebby were inseparable, but since Rod returned, I barely see them together. I wonder why. Oh, hello, Lisa. Perfect timing. We were just talking about. Emily cups her hand to her mouth, casts a serpitu. Serpitu. Serp. Yes. <laughs> look over my shoulder and then whispers. Rod. Obviously. Ophelia beckons me to the table, then turns back to Seppi. So, what happened after that? Kyuki is the stuff had his feet through the whole day. When others asked after him, when others asked after him, he feigned sickness. Emily sighs. Why didn't he just refuse the gifts? Probably because most of them are from noble women who were refusing outright, and refusing outright would have been insulting. What is this about gifts and noble women? Oh, I was just like everyone how popular Rod is with the Brigante and noble women. He was sent various gifts from young women to on hard to stay, but because he didn't want to refuse them, he avoided everyone altogether by staying in his room. I did not realize that I'm glaring until Amelia placed a hand on my arm. Lisa? I forced a scowl from my face immediately, not even sure why I was there in the first place. You don't need to worry, princess. He told them he was in love with someone else. I could feel my face heat at his words. Oh, you're blushing. I am not. I promised to look after Rod and I intend to keep that promise. And that goes for you too, princess. If I have to drive away a hundred women, I'll do it. I thought of a tiny plush bunny attempting to scare off a gaggle of girls makes me laugh. Before I know it, I've become absorbed in the conversation. Hours later, when our conversation finds out, I make my way back to my room and read my potions book. Today, I'm going to the margin for one of my magic lessons. Or at least that was the plan. Just yesterday, however, I received a letter from Parfait saying that there was a change in plans. Everyone in the margin decided to throw a small celebration for Rod. At first, Rod seemed reluctant to go, but he could refuse after Parfait personally lost his presence. In the end, the two of us agreed to go by carriage. Rod is already standing by the carriage when I arrive. I smile when our eyes meet, but Rod only nods, his mind seeming elsewhere. Immediately noticed the dark circles under his eyes. Which where? Everything alright? I'm fine. I just didn't get much sleep last night. I was reading, upreading the King's books far past midnight. King's books. I found out a few days ago that Father started lending Rod specific study materials. Apparently, those books are meant to teach Rod more about policy and the rules governing our kingdom. I hope you're not overworking yourself. Rod smiles. It's a tired but thankfully reassuring smile. He holds out a hand and helps me to the carriage. No sooner we entered the town than some of the towns would notice that the royal carriage began to wave at us. The response is uplifting before the masses of me. Now, things are different. Things first began to change when I made a public apology after breaking my curse. 
townsfolk were skeptical of whether or not I would follow my mother's footsteps on the ten brown bear I met, which just began to grow when I started spelling earlier. Fairy tale princess. Princess. I look out the window and see a little boy running to keep pace with the carriage. Can I give you something? A gift? Please? I ordered the carriage to stop and step out. The boy flashed the cheeky grin, but then without any preamble, he holds out a lily. I got this for you, princess. I take the flower from him with a gentle smile. The boy closes his hands behind his back and smiles shyly. Someday, I'll become a prince and marry you. I simultaneously think he is a deeply backward confession. I appreciate your gift, but I'm afraid I'm already courting a prince. I just start a rock who stands behind me in the carriage, the boy blinks. But he's not a real prince, right? You are right. And he's left by the boys who see eye to eye. But you do not need to be a prince to marry a princess. Really? Feel these words come to mind. One title shall not be a hindrance when it comes to love, she said. Everyone is free to love whomever they want. The boy looks through the two as his bride's smile returns. I must be to say Rod loves you very much. I glance at Rod, whose cheeks have burned into a soft crimson. With all my heart. The words come out to a little while. Only the boy and I can hear them. Still, they make my heart flutter. I get the boy my heart filled thanks for stepping back into the carriage. With all your heart. Rod crosses his arms and turns his head away, but there's no hiding the blush in his cheeks. You already know the one. Of course I do, but you're not the type to bully declare your love in front of others. I I wouldn't say I did it boldly. Rod's voice is an embarrassed mumble. I cross my arms and thought. I confess, I was a little taken aback by his comment. Regardless of where his curiosity came from, the boy was right. I'm not a prince. Why is that a problem? You yourself did not wish to remain a prince. I, I know that. He smiles weakly before turning his attention back to the view outside the window. Something definitely seems off about him. Princess Hissette, Rod, welcome. And he says first welcome us when we arrive at the merchant. No sooner have we stepped inside, however, that another person makes itself known. If it isn't everyone's favorite princess, I think it's Chevalier. Hey, I guess right. Chevalier smiles as sunny as always. He steps forward and sweeps into a courteous bow. Bow. It's been a while, Princess has said. And that it has. Hello, Chevalier. Ever since Chevalier's curse was broken, he's been working at his clinic. Gone is the tenacious flirty snow. Place is an optimistic doctor who still makes ill time jokes. <laughs> Soon we're surrounded by people. Rod stands awkwardly in the center of the room, surrounded by Chevalier, Anise, Delora, and her bag. Walt is seated away from the commotion, leaning on an armrest with a grin on his face. Her face cousin Suna is seated by the window reading a book. He is not grieving either of us. Hmm, it's maybe my imagination, but Delora raises an eyebrow. Her Royal Highness is particularly buoyant. What? Delora, you shouldn't tease his son so much. Her face heaps. The pale plot once love is always a thing to celebrate. Delora looks at me and snorts. Who are you and what have you done with the princess? I still can't believe you fell in love. I bristle at the words. It, it's not as if this is news. And anyway, what is that supposed to mean, Delora? Sorry, princess. You're just too much about the tea. But, in all seriousness, I'm glad you found someone just as stubborn as you to cherish. I'm standing right here. Dolores turns her grin to Rod. You might have some magic on your own, but being able to melt the ice princess is hard. Come now, Dolores, you're embarrassing them. <laughs> I make it far too easy, Barbet. Rod turns away with a grumble, arms crossed. Chevalier breaks a momentary silence with me. It's really a pleasure to see you again, Sir Rod. I haven't seen you since you left for Baratheon the first time. I believe your last time you were... Pause is considering. Well, you are much shorter, but now look at you. almost as tall as the rest of us. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> you just have to set a hand at Rod's head, but Rod pulls away with the grimace. What do you mean, almost as tall? Walt's pointedly cleans, clears his throat and steps between Rod and Chevalier. These two are the same height. 
I don't know, Walt seems like a little taller. So, how are things at the palace lately? Brad's expression softens. I can tell he's relieved by the change in subject. They're alright. He's here the normal, but that's to be expected with the news. Chevalier steps forward and squints at us in turn. What? There are dark circles under your eyes. Have you been under more stress lately? Brad raises an eyebrow. It's rude to impede on someone else's face. Ah, my apologies. Chevalier takes a step back. The Chevalier's quiet, I can tell by the wrinkle between his eyebrows that he's up a bit. Before he can say anything else, I decided to offer my own opinion. He is doing well. He's just been busy as all. He's working as a dance instructor and taking lessons with the king. Your concern is unwarranted and unnecessary. Chevalier smiles. Sorry, I am, by my nature, a warrior. It's true. Chevalier takes his work seriously. A little too seriously, in my opinion. Lady Talora, I am only trying to keep my patients healthy. He shakes his head. Anyway, I'm relieved I'm just over the mess. I lean closer to Rod and whisper in his ear as the conversation carries on. You're not allowed to overwork yourself. Understood? Rod sighs. Understood. He smiles but does not reach his eyes. Somewhere nearby, a book snaps shut. Must all of you be so loud? Sinai approaches, book tucked under his arm. I swear, a person can't read in peace in this place. He sucks out of the room with a glare of fixed his face. There is a silence for a few moments when he leaves, then Chevalier laughs. The tiny lord is lively as always. Tiny lord? Why does he come up with these strangest nicknames? And I guess that's one way of describing him. He may seem temperamental, but I assure you Simon is quite close enough to get to know him. I glance at Rod. It seems like Sim is someone I know. Rod says something. Even as I watch, he stifles me on. His eyes are glassy. Exactly how many hours of sleep did you get last night? In an hour or two? Rod, you're definitely pushing yourself too hard. Chevalier is right. You should take better care of yourself. I know you. You always push yourself. I just... Rod shakes his head. Never mind, it's nothing. What? I know there's something on your mind, Rod. Rod responds with a smile. When I continue to scowl, and he plans a kiss on my forehead. I swear it's something important. Don't worry. I'll get some rest when we get back to the palace. Fine. Though not all of the old boarders are present today, we decided to make the most of our small reunion. An Easter present, a small meal for me for dinner, and the gathering is lively. It's a shame Sir Garland and Lady Dream could be here, and it's been months since we saw Prince. Odd. The knights wanted me to apologize to my behalf. They've been busy training for recruits. And the last time Claude wrote, he said he was busy with his duties. I doubt he'll be free anytime soon. I'm glad he still sent us letters every so often. I do rather miss having Miss Karma around. Chevalier grunts. Speak for yourself. Miss Karma's always saying daggers at me. With good reason. Lady Talora. Parfait laughs. I'm sure we'll get the chance to have a bigger evening soon. The conversation goes on, but I notice one person has remained quiet throughout. Rod has not spoken a word since we started eating. Is it because he's tired, stressed, or is there something else on his mind? I hope I can get to the root of whatever it is soon. Alright, and that is the end of chapter two. Alright, well, I will see you all in the next video. Have a good one. Take care.